Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to America and we're going to revisit a state that I've not tried anything from in quite a while now actually, so very curious to see how uh, how this one turns out. So for this one we are going to return to Portland in Oregon and we're having a taste of my first beer from Cascade Brewing and I'm very very curious about this because I've heard that this brewery are one of the kind of pioneering breweries of the Oregon craft beer scene. So for this one, we're going to have a taste of the blueberry, which is described as a northwest sour ale, and it comes in at 8.5%. This, of course, was one of the small partiers that we got through Seisten Bolaget here in Sweden a couple of weeks back. And I actually can't remember what date this one was released on, but I bought it, and it's been sat in the fridge for a little while. It's the weekend now, so why not get this guy out and, uh, and have a taste of it? So really looking forward to this one. This, of course, is from uh, Tasting Nietzsche's Neck of the Woods. If you haven't checked out her channel already, do make sure you have a look at it I'll put the link in the description below I think she's been a little bit quiet in terms of reviewing beers lately and um, but very very nice girl of course I met her over in uh, in Copenhagen one time so uh, but yeah check out her channel she does some really interesting stuff and of course she's got a very good selection of craft beer when she's living uh, over in Oregon but yeah so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Cascade Brewing. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated and hopefully I can review some more Oregon beers for you over the next little while as well. They are starting to become more and more available over here in Europe and that's one of the things I always say about American beers is it's always the case that um, they're quite difficult to I get a lot of recommendations but they're, it's quite difficult to get a hold of some of them just because of the different laws and things that exist in, uh, in different American states but I always really enjoy reviewing stuff from different places in America. But anyway, to tell you a little bit about Cascade Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Cascade Brewing are from Portland in Oregon and they opened up back in December of 1998 in the southwestern part of the city. So Portland is the city in the world that apparently has the largest number of breweries today. It's around 70 and that is, you know, bigger than anywhere else. I'm sure I could go on holiday to uh, to Portland and spend a week there and just, you know, have a very, very messy week doing uh, beer tasting. So maybe that's something I actually need to look at at some point in the future but this company is owned by a guy called Art Larens who's widely considered to be a huge figure in the Oregon craft beer industry having co-founded one of the first microbreweries and also the Oregon Brewers Festival as well as being instrumental in having the laws changed in Oregon so that brew pubs could exist and that breweries could actually sell their beers on the premises which had actually been banned in Oregon since prohibition which I believe was back in like you know the, the late 1920s early 1930s America had prohibition there was no alcohol produced at all. But um, he'd begun homebrewing back in the 1970s and then in 1986 he and Fred Eckhart founded the, the Portland Brewing Company and he remained with them until 1994 and then four years later he founded the Raccoon Lodge and Bar and also the, also the Cascade Brewing Company. But later in 2006 art and brewmaster Ron Gansberg began to experiment with ageing and blending beers and this led to the creation of the Northwest Sour Ale style and today this brewery have over 1500 barrels that they uh, regularly regular barrels that they produce to um that they use to actually produce sour beers and they've also got nine founders as well which are these giant kind of 1800 gallon big wooden barrel things that they use actually to ferment the beers as well and age these sour beers but they've got four locations there's the brew house production facility the blending house the brewing house and also the lodge as well and the brew house apparently has a capacity of around 3200 barrels of beer per year but this can be extended up to 5000 barrels and like i said these guys were instrumental in uh, developing 
this northwest sour ale uh, category. So they they experiment a lot with uh, you know sour beers. I think it's mainly lactobacillus and Britannomyces that they use as their wild yeast. I think they use a kind of mixture of the two. Um, but they've done a hell of a lot of stuff. There's lots of different editions of their kind of base beers that they have, and a lot of them are blended in different ways and just aged in different woods and different types of casks and barrels and stuff like that. So a very you know it's another it's a completely different kind of take to brewing if you like if you're going to start playing around with blending and sour beers and stuff like that it really is something that's uh, that it's completely different just to kind of straight up process brewing if you like like you see in uh, in other places so yeah a really interesting brewery to review this one and I was glad that I was able to get a hold of one of these beers I think in Sweden I paid around 120 crowns for this uh, for this bottle which is somewhere along the equivalent of two of uh, 12 US dollars or um, about 10 euros or something like this so it was a little bit more expensive but you know I thought I've heard very very good things about this brewery so why not have a taste of this beer overall in rate beer this guy I think has a 97 overall and a 93 within the sour beer category so you know it should be a pretty good beer but they've got a whole host of different things if you want to learn a little bit more about those and of course a little bit more about the brewery you can have a check on the brewery website you can follow them on facebook you can follow them on instagram but for me that's all you really need to know about them before we actually taste the beer one thing about this beer as well like i said this one is 8.5 percent this one apparently was uh it's a blend of a beer that they, of two different beers that they've aged for six months in barrels so they've aged uh, a blonde beer in barrels for six months. They've also aged a wheat beer as well and then they've mixed them together and then they've actually added fresh blueberries to it and then allowed it to um, to uh, to age for another six months or ferment for another six months which is uh, or four months rather not six months which is uh, very very cool. So this one I think should be one of the more unusual beers that I've reviewed on the channel over the last little while but very excited to try it. So let's have a go at this one. I'll just let you have another little quick look at the artwork before we open it up but there you can see you know it's Fairly, it's one of these ones that is uh, fairly simple. We can turn off the computer now since we don't need the brewery notes anymore. Um, but yeah, this one is from 2016, so I'm guessing it's about two years old. And this one was imported into Sweden by um, Neptunium. So yeah, I've not heard of that company before. I think this is the first beer I've had from them that they've imported um, and given to say Stembolaga. Yeah, but it says here... Um, this Northwest Sour Ale is a blend of wheat and blonde ales aged in oak barrels for up to 12 months with fresh blueberries. And it says you should drink around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in real temperature measurements. I have no idea what um, 40 degrees Fahrenheit is. I'm guessing it's somewhere around, you know, 7, 8 degrees Celsius. I really, I don't understand that. In America, I always complain about this when I review American beers. It says on the side here that this one is uh, 9 point, is, um, nine, it's 750 milliliters. So they have used a proper measurement with this one, but you get so many American beers where it's all about fluid ounces and stuff. And I just never understood this. I don't know why America's never used the metric system like everybody else. But yeah, let's, get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. It's got one of these nice little corky tops to it. So yeah, oh it says, it does actually say on the cork, Cascade Brewing as well, so they've got custom corks, which is pretty cool. So let's just see how we get on with this. Hopefully it doesn't go bang. Yeah, it's not going to go crazy, that's good. So yeah, let's get some of this out and we'll get on with the tasting. And you can see, nice smoky opening on this. And we'll get it out and into the glass. A little bit of it sparking over. I tell you straight away, this smells really pretty damn nice. That's about a third of it in the glass there. And I'm just seeing on the camera, that looks ridiculously clear. So, <clears throat> when you hold it up to the light, it's actually a very nice ruby colour. I actually thought it would be more of a kind of, you know, like black currant, blackberry-ish colour. But it is a really nice, just almost... Um, ruby colour. There's a solid half finger of a frothy, kind of pinkish fawn head there. It reminds me of like, some of the purple rice. It's almost a similar, similar colour as the purple rice I was having when I was over in Taiwan not that long ago. But one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look uh, pretty nice. And um, the colour is a little bit surprising. Like I said, I would have expected this one to be a little bit more... Um, you know, just like darker, you know, black, blackberry, blueberry sort of colour in its appearance, but it's it's actually just, you know, it's more of a ruby-ish colour, so 
quite surprised at that, I have to admit. But yeah, you know, in terms of a sour beer, um, overall as a sour beer, it's not overly surprising in terms of his experience, but uh, of its uh, appearance, not experience. My brain is not working today. Um, but yeah, it looks very, very nice and uh, not overly surprising to find a beer of this colour from the, the sour beer category. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma and see how we get on with this one. But I will say, as soon as you open this beer up, you're going to get some of these lovely blueberry notes out of it, which is exactly what you'd expect. Ooh, yeah. That smells nice. It does smell really nice. So yeah, with this beer then, you've got... You can smell a little bit of a bready note to it. There is a little bit of a kind of wheaty, um, bready sort of thing in there. Um, you can smell a little bit of a kind of almost... I think there's a little touch of a biscuity quality to this one as well. There is definitely a little bit of the malty... Um, aroma coming out of this beer, which is nice. I like it. I do like it when there's a bit more to these sour beers than just you know straight up you know lactobacillus or whatever. But yeah, a little bit of a hoppy note. It does have an element of that kind of grassy, slightly floral freshness to it. it. Has got a little bit of that, and you can smell some of that slightly tart, you know, citric um, acidy kind of thing from the lactobacillus and Britannomyces. You can definitely pick up a little bit of that sharper, citricy, almost lemon sherbet, you know, actually, out of this beer. But then, it does, it, as you would expect, when the beer's called blueberry and it's aged with blueberries, you start to get these lovely, kind of fruity notes out of it. It does have a little bit more complexity, I think, than just blueberries. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry or something like that. As I always say, it reminds me of these little heart-shaped sweets in the Haribo Starmix. It's got a little bit of that kind of thing going on. But yeah, blueberries absolutely dominating the, the aroma in this, but that really is not surprising. So yeah, as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I'm very, very curious about this one, so let's have a taste of it. This one is the Blueberry, uh, an 8.5% sour beer. Um, this one in particular, a blend of a gold nail and uh, a wheat beer. Aged for six months and then aged with an, when they're blended together, aged for another four months was flesh, with uh, fresh blueberries. I can't remember what's going on with my speech today. Um, from Cascade Brewing Company, a Northwest Sour Ale, my very first taste of this particular type of beer from Cascade Brewing in Portland, in Oregon. Special shout out to Tasting Niche, of course, once again, but let's get stuck into this beer. Slanja School. Oh, yeah, that's actually really nice. It's that one is a good bit more sour than a lot of the other, you know, kind of sour beers and stuff that I've come across recently. I really like what what's um what this one's doing. Oh, yeah. I will say, I mean, in Sweden here, we have Brekeria, who have some really, really awesome sour beers. But I find, in, in some ways, they're a little bit more traditional. They use a lot of the American hops and things in theirs, which is, and the hoppy presence still comes out a little bit. They're more kind of, they're blending these sour flavours with those nice hoppy elements. This one, it's almost a little bit more like a, to me, the way that this beer comes across is almost a little bit more like a lambic or something like that, and of course there are key flavour profile differences between this and a Lambic, don't get me wrong, but the sort of level of sourness and the, the flavour profile of this beer itself does remind me a little bit more of a Lambic than, than the other sour beers that I've had, to be honest. I mean, I'm thinking of like Crooked Stave and, um, and other breweries like this that I've had, Wicked Weed are another one that do the sour beers over in America. This one, it, it really does remind me a little bit more of a Lambic rather than um, some of the other sour beers like Berlin and Weisses and all that kind of thing. This, that's, that's my impression of this beer, but I will say straight up, it is very, very nice. Just be aware of that when you, if you taste this for the first time, and this is my first taste of a nail of this uh, particular style, it is, it is really a bit more close to the Lambic in my opinion. But yeah, I like how this one comes across. It just takes your mouth a few sips to actually get used to it. But it's a damn good beer, so a big thumbs up 
the Cascade Brewing on this one. It's almost a little bit puckering with how uh, with how sour it is, but I dare to, I dare say that if you drink a few of their beers, you know you you would get used to it. If you're used to this style, then of course it is. You know you cannot when you inter when you try new beer styles, it always takes you a little bit of time to adjust to them and fully appreciate them. I found, um, but yeah, let's think about this a little bit. So. Middle of the palate then with this beer, you can feel a little bit of that kind of wheaty, um, white bready malt because that just blankets the middle of your tongue there, you can feel that there. Um, as the beer kind of mellows out a little bit, you start to get some of these um, slightly sweeter malty notes, which I'm guessing are coming from the golden ale side of things. It's got a little bit of a um, biscuity note to it as well, but these malty flavours come out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste with this beer that you go. It starts off very, very sharp and very, very kind of puckering almost. The sour of things come in at you straight away with this beer. It's, it's, it's you know, straight up very, very punchy, but I like that about it. I certainly do like that. And I like it how in the aftertaste you start to get a little bit more of the um, the sweeter um, malty base coming out of this one. I, this is just a really, really good beer and it's something that's really challenging my palate and you know when you've re reviewed about 1500 beers this is the kind of thing that you want actually. You do want things that are going to make you think a little bit about exactly what's going on but I really do like this beer. So on the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, there's a tiny little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of your tongue it does smooth out a little bit um, there is a, a little hint of a floral quality there, but again, that's very smooth. When this beer is two years old, most of the hops will have dropped out of the flavour. But then round the very front curve of the palate, you do have a little bit of that lighter, kind of um, grassy thing going on with this beer. But around the edge of the palate, of course, that's where you're getting the blueberry flavours come out. If you add fruit to the beer, it always just suppresses a little bit of the IBU side of the beer. I've always found that if you add, like... If you do fruit additions to the beer rather than extracting the fruity flavours from the hops, then the the juiciness of that of the fruit that you've added it just suppresses the um, the IBU side of the beer a little bit, and you can feel those flavours coming out around the edge of your palate. So the blueberries for me, um, uh, there's a good chunk of that flavour just coming out around the very kind of front edges, the front curve of your tongue, if you like. But yeah, I like how everything is um, is coming across in this. This beer is it's, it's really punchy in terms of its sourness, but then when it starts to get into the aftertaste and you and you sort of start to enjoy all these little after flavours from it, it really is just about how everything um, blends together. It's 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 one of these beers that's just very punchy in the beginning, but then when it mellows out, you really start to appreciate the blend of all the flavours that are in here. It's, it's, it really is just nice and very, very interesting, I have to say. That's a good way to kind of summarise this one for me. Um, in terms of the fruity side of the beer, or the, the sour side of it, it's almost like if you just go in from the edge of your tongue, you can feel that sharp citricky note just on the um, the inside of your, your tongue. So just in from the edge a little bit and that's where these sharp, tart, lemony, citricky kind of things from the lactobacillus and Britannomyces are coming out of this beer. I actually can't remember which one they said they were using in this. It doesn't say on the bottle right enough. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, you know, it's, it, some, there is a slight difference in taste, I find, between the Britannomyces and the Lactobacillus, but they, they essentially do the same kind of thing. Um, but the one, the, the tartness in this beer is really sharp. This, for me, is one of the tartest um, and, sharp, and most sour beers that I've come across, actually. And, of course, it is the thing, when you get these sour beers going over to America, when it comes to Scotch ales and stuff, the Americans like to amp things up a little bit. So it's not surprising that this is one of the more sour beers that I've come across but it is very very nice if you buy one of these big bottles definitely share it though it's it's one of these ones it's nice to have the taste of it and um, but share it with a couple of friends and just enjoy it together I think to have a full bottle of this to yourself would be a little bit of a challenge and at 8.5% as well it is a little bit heavy and the sour beers that are heavier in alcohol are a little bit easier to drink but the fruity side of this beer is really nice and um, to me, the fruitiness, the further into the aftertaste you go with this one, I think there's a bit more of a kind of candied fruity note to it. Yeah, there is a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit thing. Just at the front part of your palate, you can feel there's a little bit of that 
almost candied red fruit strawberry sort of thing coming out of this one. Just a little bit like the heart shaped sweets in Haribo Star Mix. There is a little bit of that coming out of this beer. But mainly, as the name would suggest, it's blueberries with this one. But the, the tartness of this beer just gives it a really interesting edge. But there's a lot going on in this one, so try it for yourself and see what you think. Like I say, though, share this with friends because it's it really is... It reminds me a lot more of a Lambic than some of the other um, sour beers that I've come across. It is that tart, actually. So, um, so yeah, in, really interesting... Um, Try that one, but with the Lambics, of course, they used it. They, they kind of do it similar to this. They blend up different beers and then age them with different fruits and things like that, and make the, the these cultures and stuff, the fermenting cultures and things. It's it, the Lambic beers are very very interesting, but for me, this is this is a good beer, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to try some of the other ones. I might buy some smaller bottles than this, right enough. Whether they do those or not, I'm not sure. But in terms of the mouthfeel, then I would say. Um, Yeah, light bodied. Carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it. You always find that with the sour beers, I find. Mouthfeel is fairly wet. At the same time, it's got a good bit of tartness to back it up. Little touch of um, flavour from the hops. There's not really any real bitterness to this beer. Mainly, it's quite smooth. Nice little bit of the sweetness from the malt basis, particularly when you go further into it. And uh, good juicy fruity notes as well. But there's a lot of sharp tartness to it. This is one of the most tart beers and, uh, and sour beers that I've actually come across, but to me, very, very nice beer. And this uh, this, this Northwest Sour Ale category is one that I definitely need to investigate a little bit more. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This has been a really interesting review, and it does make me want to go and find out a little bit more about this, uh, this particular beer style. So yeah, if you are watching in Oregon, do let me know some of the other breweries that do this kind of thing. It'd be really interesting to see what else is going on up there in Oregon with these sour beers because I really like in Sweden here as I say we have Breakeria who do some awesome stuff but I'd love to see um, more sour beers it's a craze that's kind of uh, taken off a little bit more recently but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one so this one was the blueberry and 8.5% Northwestern Sour Ale with blueberries added to it from Cascade Brewing in Portland in Oregon. Been really cool to review my first beer from this brewery and I do hope that I can review more Oregon beers for you in the fairly near future. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Cascade Brewing as well. Do give me some other Oregon beer recommendations like I was saying. But until the next time, slandra just now. And I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media. Have a taste of some of these Cascade beers. And once again, thank you for watching. Until the next time, slang just now. And I'll catch you guys later. Skull.